Hi there, I'm Teresa McManus with the Royal City Record. I'm here today with Lewis Dalby. He's the Libertarian candidate in New Westminster. Hi Lewis, can you tell me how long you've lived in New Westminster? Hi. Um, actually, I, I don't live in New Westminster. I live in Port Coquitlam uh, with my wife and one daughter. i got two daughters. And uh, the reason I'm running in New Westminster is because uh, we have another candidate in Port Coquitlam. And I don't mind roaming around. I've run in actually quite a few different ridings, provincially and federally. And I just chose New Westminster. I thought it was nice because the boundaries are easy to follow. <laughs> Can you tell me what, why you think you're uniquely qualified to represent this writing? Um, well, I thought about this question, and um, uh, my purpose is not really to run to get a, elected. It's my chances of getting elected are, are you know, pretty remote, and uh, I've run before, so I realize it's not that likely. It is theoretically possible, but uh, so I'm. T how am I uniquely qualified? Um, I'm, I'm trying to promote liberty, and so uh, the concept of representing a, uh, a writing, it's actually kind of, it doesn't fit with libertarian philosophy. We, we're trying to reduce the size of government, and if you fall, the, most libertarians actually believe in zero government, but you could still have government through voluntary consent, and that's what I would advocate. I would actually uh, voluntarily consent to a very minimal type of government but for those people that want the security of government and socialized medicine and education, they can have uh, voluntarily consent to that kind of a system. Although Walter Block always tells me that you can't call it government. It could be just like a government, but the word government implies that you can't opt out. There's, you're forced into it, and you have to comply with all the rules. And so it's kind of like the word... Um, Rape. You can't voluntarily consent to rape because the word implies that you haven't voluntarily consented. Well, government and taxes are the same way. And so it would have to be like an organization or a commune or a group. And under pure libertarianism, those groups would probably grow quite large. And uh, But you could opt out any time you want. Um, but while you're there, you're consenting to the rules of the organization or the commune, whatever you want to call it. And uh, so you, you'd have to, you take the good with the bad kind of thing. And I understand that. And like I live in a, uh, a townhouse complex, and that's kind of an example of a voluntary consent through a democracy because we can opt out whenever we want, and we understand there's a, an elected council that sets the rules. And uh, if we don't like it, we don't have to live there. But I was born in Canada, and I shouldn't have to f leave the country to find liberty. And what would be your priority if elected in what way? Uh, well, as libertarians, we want to reduce the size of government. So um, if I was just a single libertarian MLA, I would probably vote against pretty much everything the government was trying to do because we're trying to reduce the size of government and uh, lower ta the overall taxation level. And uh, so probably... Uh, I mean, I wouldn't have much effect if I was by myself, but if we ever got into power, we would have, you know, a fairly good following just to get to power, so then we would start re reducing the size of government. But my first priority would to be to create a small libertarian um, enclave of a, maybe 5% of the province where it would be pure, hardcore libertarianism. And for those people, because, you know, we might not be in power forever, and then it might flip back to uh, a more socialistic type government and then we'd be back to square one. But if we had a, a libertarian zone, then we could escape. And then why would the, the socialists even want libertarians there mucking up their system? Well, you know, th there's nothing wrong with socialism it's, if it's through voluntary consent and you kind of buy into the concept and you like that. And, uh, but it works better if everyone kind of buys into the system. Which uh, accomplishment in your life are you proudest of? Um, actually, uh, I think it's my idea about democracy. And uh, democracy is one of those words that everyone thinks is such a wonderful word. We're kind of brainwashed as children that democracy, democracy is a great concept. And um, I, it took me a long time to come to the realization that democracy isn't so wonderful. And in fact, it's evil 
and immoral when um, when it's imposed on you, right? And if it's so wonderful, you should be allowed. Why sh- why are you forced to participate? You should be able to opt out. So democracy is fine and it's perfectly legitimate as long as you have voluntary consent. And I mentioned the townhouse complex. That's a, a case of voluntary consent. I also went to a, a Hutterite col- colony in Saskatchewan one time. That's another example of pure socialism, but it's through voluntary consent. And um, I talked to the people there, and it, they got free houses, free education, free medical system. Uh, free food, but you're expected to work, and there's an elected council, and they decide who's going to do what and wh- what machineries they're going to buy, if they're going to buy carbon, all this stuff. But you can opt out whenever you want. That's what makes it legitimate, and it's consistent with libertarianism. But uh, in Canada, no, even if I move to the northern tip of Baffin Island, I still have to pay the taxes. You know, it's not legal to uh, grow marijuana, for example, or smoke marijuana. You still have to support the CBC and all kinds of things that you may not choose to, and so uh, it's it's not right to uh, to just impose your will on other people that want to make their own choices and just live peacefully. Um, so, oh yeah, so the I was you were asking about the cons. What am I most proud of? Well, for the longest time, I was trying to find out what's the formula because I thought, well, democracy it's got some merit, and how do we? Like, how do we decide? And then finally, because it's, it seemed to make sense, like majority rule, but then I realized that democracy, at its very, very best, reflects the will of the majority. And rarely is it even that good. We get a government that's usually elected by 40% of the population, and then they pretty much do whatever they want. And then and it, NDP cabinet famously said one time, governments can do whatever they want. And he's right about that. They can do whatever they want. And democracy routinely tramples on the rights of individuals. And I can give you some examples. Like in Canada, um, we used to have slavery in Canada. They had slavery in the United States. Uh, The Japanese Canadians during the Second World War, their property, their boats and businesses were seized. They were sent to internment camps, which maybe you might say is understandable during the Second World War. But after the war, all that stuff was not returned to them, so they just confiscated. But that's democracy. That, that was the will of the majority at the time. And uh, at one time, homosexual rights were uh, uh, illegal, uh, or homosexual acts, I guess you could say. And so uh, that's the majority imposing their rights on the minority. Uh, if Even if the majority wants to legalize marijuana, if it's 51%, the government of the day still doesn't want to do that. I think it is probably more like 60% wants to legalize it, but yet it's not. So, but and if the majority wants to uh, deny you the right to get health care in a timely fashion, the will of the majority will say no. You get on the waiting list and you wait. And uh, Canada is only one of two countries. The other one is North Korea, where you're really not supposed to get. Uh, private health care, unless, you know, for your pet rat, you could do that, probably. <laughs> you could get same-day service for your pet rat if you have one. <laughs> and then who, who in your life has been a role model for you? Uh, pr- probably Walter Block is one of the most influential, uh, and uh, he's a well-known libertarian. That's He's originally from New York, but it's, he lives in North Van now, or at least his family does. He kind of works in the state sometimes. Uh, Milton Friedman was one of the most influential back in the 1970s uh, for me becoming a, a libertarian. Uh, Ron Paul in the United States is uh, probably the most high-profile libertarian in the states right now, even though he's like 76, I think, and he's pretty much his son has sort of taken over uh, Rand Paul. And Ron Paul, even though he's with the Republican Party, he's really a libertarian. And he was the libertarian presidential candidate in 1988. <coughs> but it's hard to get elected under this system. Per first past the post, uh, the little, the smaller parties just get squeezed out. And it generally the voter kind of looks at it, well, who's the lesser of the two evils? And so the little parties get squeezed out. And uh, that's what happens. But, uh, yeah, and maybe Tom- Thomas Jefferson... Uh, I, I, maybe they're not role models, but they're kind of people that are inf- 
influential for me. I don't know if role model is the is the right term for that. Uh, just people that I kind of admire and kind of adopt their philosophy.